Spending two to three million dollars on a five megawatt solar plant puts your investment risk high in the sky, exactly where lightning strikes. Can you afford to leave your plant unprotected? Nobody would. Which is why proper earthing and lightning protection systems are essential for a solar plant. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and in today's video, we will talk about how to protect your solar farms from electrical faults. By the end of this video, you will understand why earthing and lightning protection are important for a solar farm, the steps for calculating the earthing requirements, and earthing issues and design standards that a solar farm needs. But why should you listen to me? At Axis, we have been manufacturing earthing and lightning protection systems for the past 30 years. You will find our products installed in solar farms, data centers, airports, metro projects and much more across the world. So let's start by understanding the need for earthing in a solar farm. Firstly, setting up a solar farm is a huge investment. It involves purchasing a large number of solar panels, inverters and other expensive electrical equipment. Therefore, proper maintenance of a solar farm is important to extend its lifespan and ensure its efficiency. The maintenance includes regularly inspecting the solar panels as well as checking the electrical wiring and earthing systems. Let's talk about earthing. It is the process of establishing an electrical connection between a conductive object such as a solar panel and the earth. This connection is important for many reasons, but the most important is the protection of people and equipment from electrical shock. Improper earthing can expose solar panels and electrical equipment to damage from electrical surges, lightning strikes and other disturbances. Such damage leads to the failure of solar panels, resulting in costly repairs or replacements. However, establishing an effective earthing connection safeguards your solar farms against electrical hazards, ensuring smooth operations by directing the flow of faulty currents into the ground. Before we continue, a quick reminder Please make sure to subscribe to our channel for regular updates on electrical engineering. Now, let's understand the steps for calculating the earthing requirements for a solar farm. The earthing requirements for our solar panels are very specific. They vary based on the particular installation as well as local electrical codes and regulations. To determine these requirements, you need two pieces of information. The soil's earthing resistance and the size and layout of the solar panel installation. Based on these factors, the proper earthing electrodes and conductors should be selected and the earthing design can be designed. Now, let's look at some general steps required to calculate the earthing requirements for a solar farm. Firstly, determine the earthing resistance. Earth resistance is the resistance between the earthing system and the ground. This can be calculated using a test instrument such as an earth resistance tester and should be measured at different points around the solar farm. We have a separate video on what earth resistance exactly means and how to measure it. The link is right here and also in the description. Secondly, select the correct earthing electrodes. Based on the earthing resistance and the size and layout of your solar farm, the appropriate earthing electrodes should be selected. These electrodes are crucial for eliminating fault currents in the ground. This may include earthing plates, earth rods, or many other types of earthing electrodes, depending on the specific requirements of your solar farm. Step 3. Design the earthing system. The earthing system should be adequately designed to provide an effective earthing connection for solar panels and other electrical equipment. This involves installing earthing electrodes at strategic locations around the solar farm and connecting them to the solar panels and other equipment using copper, copper bonded or GI conductors. Step 4. Test the earthing system. One of the most important steps. Once the earthing system has been installed, it should be properly tested to ensure that it provides an effective earthing connection for the solar panels and other equipment. Finally, let's move on to the design standards used for earthing a solar farm. Several earthing design guidelines and standards apply to solar farms. These documents offer guidance on designing, installing and testing earthing systems. The standards specify requirements for selecting, designing, testing and installing earthing systems to confirm their effectiveness. Covering the technical details of each standard is beyond the scope of this video. It will take too much time. But these are the relevant standards that you can read in order to understand the earthing requirements. First of all, 
we have IEC 60364 and IEC 62561. Then we have the British Standard BS7430. And finally, IEEE 2778 2020. I hope you now have a brief overview of the importance of earthing in solar farms. At Axis, we have a team of 40 plus engineers who are here to help you in designing and installing your earthing systems. Our earthing materials have been used in large scale solar farms, data centers, and even everyday residential and commercial buildings. But before I leave you, I have a quick question for you. What else should be done to protect solar farms from electrical accidents? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos about lightning protection, grounding systems and other topics on electrical engineering.